Hi, welcome to Morning Coffee Guest. I'm Carol Francis. Now, this morning I have with me the author of five books. She has researched a spectrum of eras from health to gender equality, and she is also the foremost authority on the negative effects of pornography. What sparked this interest? Oh, <laughs> well, um, my, my daughter at age 10 was raped by the boy upstairs who she, we, all, we all thought of him as her brother, sort of, you know. Uh, and when we traced uh, what had led to that, uh, we found his father had stacks of Playboy in the closet. He used to use those. I don't say read those. He used to consume those. And he had molested his brother, and he, he had molested children all over the neighborhood. Um, but uh, the 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 children, uh, despite that, the uh, he, there was never reported to anybody. We no one ever really knew about it because there was a pure uh, grace period between. If a boy raped a girl, he was uh, thirteen, she was ten. That was allowed. You see, there was a three to five years and so on. So it got me started on trying to find out. What was in Playboy? What was in, what pornography was, and uh, that led me to um, to Alfred Kinsey. <laughs> it was a it was a journey, a long journey, a painful journey sometimes, mm -hmm. but a very important, a very important journey. So, uh, and I have followed the uh, effects of pornography ever since. That was the the effects today are. Enormous. Uh, Before yeah. we go on, you mentioned Dr. Kinsey. Who mm -hmm. is Dr. Kinsey? Well, Dr. Alfred Kinsey was the founder. He wrote Sexual Behavior in the Human Male. It was a black blockbuster mm -hmm. in 1948. And Sexual Behavior in the Human Female, a block, another blockbuster in, in 1953. And he, uh, he was the, considered the father of the sexual revolution. Mm -hmm. uh, most young people don't even know there was a sexual revolution anymore. They know there's an industrial revolution, right, yeah. but they don't know there's a sexual revolution, which is amazing mm -hmm. when you consider where we are sexually today and, and that they don't know the, the, the history of that, that transition. So uh, he, he, was, uh, he wrote these books. Law, all of our laws were changed based upon what he, what he wrote, our attitudes about gender, about uh, sex, about sex with children, uh, everything uh, were, ch was cha were changed because of what he said was true and, and he lied. And, um, and Hugh Hefner, turns out, wrote his thesis on Kinsey when he was in college because he was a virgin in college. And uh, he read Kinsey and he said, oh, I, everybody's been having a good time except me. But wait a minute, you said he lied. What were some of the theories that Kinsey put forward? And how did you discover that these were lies? Well, I read his book. <laughs> it, it, it turns out that, that most of the people like to quote him, but few people read him. Mm -hmm. and, and his books were very clear. Uh, we have, uh, we'll be lecturing on that. Uh, at the conference uh, and on, let's see, on the 8th, I guess, no, 6th, mm. on the 6th. Um, and uh, he had a table, uh, you know, he had tables 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, uh, in which he said right there that a, a five-month-old baby uh, had an orgasm in, in, and he timed them. You know, he had a stopwatch. Mm. He said a, a four-year-old had 26 orgasms in 24 hours, and there was a stopwatch, a, a two-month-old baby. And so there were records, records, data, and, and, every, and they were right there. And he said that an orgasm was fainting, having convulsions, screaming, crying, and so I, yeah, and I read that. And I said, this, he, this is a psychopath. This man would be a, a, a sadomasochistic pedophile. And that got me started uh, on Kinsey. What became of Alfred Kinsey and, and your research into him? 
Well, uh, he died in 50, 1956 or 57. Uh, but an institute's named after him at the Indi at Indiana University. S still, is that it, it's the Kinsey Institute, um, and uh, he his research is alive and well right now. We, I did a paper on on um, his influence on the law, and it goes from 1948 massive influence all the way to 2014 when he is being used in the law to change uh, laws, to change, well, to, the main thing was to change people's thinking. Mm -hmm. he, he said that children are sexual from birth. He said uh, that, ch that uh, children could have sex with adults with no, dif no downside, no problem. Uh, he said, uh, our women on our men, this was World War II, excuse me, when we were pretty conservative, and we really were <laughs> conservative. Mm -hmm. uh, he said that, uh, that half of the men were committing adultery and that 27% of the women committed adultery. He said uh, abortion was, was common, was 27% of, of, or 25% of our women that were married, he said, had abortions. Well, wait a minute. Where were all the dead babies? You know, where was all the where were the where was the the uh, the sexual transmitted sexually transmitted diseases? Uh, where was the fallout? He said there was no fallout from sex. There was no fallout from any kind of sexual activity. Therefore, do what you will, have sex with whom you will, as many people as you want, because there's no downside, no rape. He said he, 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 he had questioned 4,441 women, it's right in his book, and none of them had, had experienced any serious rape. He said one, one person, maybe. I mean, I know things were better in those days. I mean, I lived then, but they were not that much better. And the entire world, uh, world, globally uh, believed him. Uh, he was found, funded by Rockefeller money. Uh, that money saw it, its way through to uh, becoming the basis of what often, of what is taught in the schools today. So no, this man has had a global impact, global. One of the things you mentioned earlier was about pornography and mm -hmm. the fact that it actually alters the structure of the human brain. Yes. Tell us about that. Well, it's really pretty simple. In three tenths of a second, a, a visual image or any kind of stimuli entering the, the brain comes to the, to the, back, of the, the here, back of the brain and straight down into, the, into its target or origin, you know, it's target uh, practice, target, which is the genitals. Uh, and children uh, have not got a developed brain. Their brains do not, de doesn't, don't develop uh, in terms of their, their cognitive ability in thinking and rational thinking and planning uh, and judgment. That doesn't mature until 21, 20, 25 years of age. Mm -hmm. And the brain sciences are clear on that. So when we stimulate children at a very young age, which we're doing in the schools, you're not doing it as much in Jamaica, but in the UK, in, uh, in, the, in America, we have children being taught um, in, in their primary grades that, there, that there's no difference between uh, buggery uh, and oral sex and, and and natural sex between women and men. Uh, and that's, that's, not only is that a lie, 
but they're told that uh, they, can, they can use condoms uh, and that that will help protect them if they use them right. But the condom was never approved by the FDA and, and never approved by any medically solid uh, organization worldwide. The condom was never approved for uh, anal, excuse me, mm -hmm. or, or oral. That's what, that's what we come to at we're, we're breakfast. Um, sex was never approved uh, because it doesn't work and because uh, that means that, uh, and as we, I'm trying to tell people, any number of homosexual, bisexual, heterosexual, transgender, whatever, people who have contracted any sort of venereal disease, whether it's HIV, AIDS, or other diseases, and they've tried these activities using a condom that was recommended by Planned Parenthood or whoever, they have, there's a class action lawsuit there waiting to happen. If they have contracted any kind of diseases, believing what they were told, uh, that they could have this kind of activity and be safe using a condom, that was a lie. You're an expert. Um, witness for a lot of different yeah. um, organizations mm -hmm. and stuff. How do you think that your expert testimony has made a difference in this revolution, this sexual revolution? Well, I think it has made a difference. Yeah, it's had an effect. Uh, I think that when people find, uh, have face the fact that the Department of Justice identifies 64% of our forcible sodomy victims as boys under 12, uh, that helps to change people's thinking uh, when I'm able to talk about, we had 14,000 military men, 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 who were, um, who were involved in sexual abuse themselves. They were abused, and some of it being penetration. Uh, 14,000 in one year, last year alone, military men. Uh, that makes a difference if people know this kind of information. Right now, we're facing the United States uh, hazing. You know, hazing, uh, we used to know hazing was make people drink liquor or something like that. Um, and now, in the high schools and junior high schools, we're facing the, the anal penetration of, of boys by other teammates. It's funny, they think. And that's hazing. The impact of these kinds of things on, on people, on their minds, on, on their emotions, on their, on their bodies are, are enormous. The problems are enormous. The, the, the marriage situation uh, you know, is, is very serious. And there is a, a clear attack on the family, a clear attack on the idea that women and men actually are the, are the compatible people to, and that children should be, uh, should be fathered and children should be mothered and, and couples should be encouraged to be able to live together in, in some companionship. So yeah, and I've, I've had the opportunity to, in the Netherlands, to, uh, to uh, they accused a playboy tried to sue me in the Netherlands, accused, us, accused me of libel and slander mm -hmm. because I said uh, that they produced child pornography. And in the Netherlands, which is not the most conservative mm -hmm. uh, you know, of nations, uh, the judge ruled no, that I was correct, that uh, the data are very clear. I, I work with the data. What the data say is exactly what has to be understood. Has your research helped lawmakers in terms of putting better or changing the laws that are there now or preventing some of them from changing? Yeah, I think so. Uh, recently, I was in Croatia. And uh, in Croatia, they were facing a, a, a attack on the, the families. Uh, they had brought a Kinsey educator into Croatia was bringing sex, sex education into the schoolroom and teaching the children these mm -hmm. things. And um, the Supreme Court of Croatia uh, ruled that they, they could not teach that. They had to pull everything. So that was a, 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 definite, uh, a definite gain. But uh, yeah, and I hope that I've helped a little bit with the uh, buggery laws here. 
-hmm. with the buggery laws in Jamaica. Yeah. Um, what is your involvement in that whole issue? Um, buggery? <laughs> no, in Jamaica. Oh, 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 yeah. Well, I'm very happy to have been invited because I'll be speaking at the conference. Uh, and I would, I will be speaking about the whole history of, of Kinsey. Kinsey, as, as he evolved into a world, world movement, if you will. Uh, and I'll be speaking about the effect of that on men and on women um, and children. And um, in that, I think that I have something to offer to the Jamaican people. Mm -hmm. uh, it was in, just like Croatia. Croatia is a small country, but it takes a leadership role. And I think Jamaica takes a leadership role in the Caribbean and it will stand and will, can stand as an example to the rest of the countries and to the big bad, you know, American to our, mm -hmm. our uh, who think we're so advanced and, and developed yeah. and we're not, you know, yeah. really. What do you think can be done by individuals, companies, organizations, to make a change? Well, I think uh, they should join, really, the coalition, uh, the coalition that stands for the family here. It's, it's a powerful group. I, I, I think it's, it's our time. It is time, uh, because so much is at risk. Individuals can join. They can participate. They can. This, is, this struggle is not over here. It's going to be an ongoing struggle because it's not Jamaican made. Jamaica is reflecting what some enormous money, powerful money people on the outside uh, have, have, have wanted to take place. Uh, it's a global effort. Of, by big pharma, big pharma, big pharmacologically, mm -hmm. um, pharma, they, they make a fortune when uh, on, on vaccines, on uh, their Viagra, on all these other things, on uh, that, and on abortion, and you know, mm -hmm. and all the things that are associated with that. And organizations, businesses have a lot at risk if they if this happens. They have the nation at risk. They have the nation's children at risk and it's on their watch it's on their watch and they have to decide whether they're able to answer their maker And thanks for staying with us. Joining us now is Philippa Davies, the Advocacy Officer for the Jamaica Coalition for Healthy Society. Now, could you tell us about that society? Yes, the Jamaica Coalition for a Healthy Society is a local family advocacy NGO, and we promote the Judeo-Christian philosophy as the most coherent philosophy out of any of the com competing ideologies that are out there, mm -hmm. the most coherent philosophy for defining family, ordering society and promoting human flourishing. And our objectives include public education, it includes preparing policy and legal papers, it inf involves interfacing with the media, and also to intervene in a public debate on matters regarding the family and protecting our constitutional freedoms. How long has the organization been around? Just two years, uh -huh. we're just two years old. But we have recognized the threats to family and to marriage, not only locally, but from international sources. And we realize that we have to stand, we have to speak in order to preserve this fundamental unit of society. If you don't have healthy families, you can't have a healthy society. Do you think yours is a voice in the wilderness? Because persons will say, um, the flow, what is happening now, you can't stop that. 
We, we certainly consider ourselves among the few who are taking a public stand on these matters. But through our work, we have found that there are many persons, many Jamaicans who share the same view with us, whether they're Christians or not. But they perhaps need to have more information on what exactly is happening locally and internationally, and how to articulate their concerns and how to stand in a practical manner, whether it is attending our conferences or workshops, whether it's writing to their MP, whether it is speaking to their local local councillors, whether it is organizing something through their church or community, it's just having an idea of how they can be advocates at their level where they are. Do you have a lot of persons who are members of the group or do you find that people hesitate? You know, you know a lot of times you, don't, you will say, I support you, but you support you in private, not publicly. Well, we're actually less than a dozen persons within the group itself. But as I said, we find that there are many persons who are like-minded out in the, in the wider society, and especially, especially in light of what happened earlier this year with Professor Brendan Bain, how he was uh, dismissed by the university, having given his expert testimony in a case involving our constitutional freedoms in the Supreme Court, and also what happened when the JFJ Fan Plan and the CVCC went into our children's homes with a controversial sex education program. I think those two incidents really brought home to persons the attack on family, attack on childhood, and realize that this is not something that is happening outside of Jamaica, and therefore it doesn't concern us, but it's actually at home, on our shores, and therefore all of us, well-thinking Jamaicans who are concerned about our children, concerned about family and marriage, and concerned about our society, we need to be informed and we need to stand up and to speak. One of the ways that you speak is to have these public outings and stuff. Tell us about the human rights um, conference that you put on. Well, for the third year running, the JCHS, along with the Lawyers Christian Fellowship, and this year we've been joined by Jamaica Cause, we're hosting an international human rights conference. And this year's theme is international law, family and development, the family as a strategy for development. Mm -hmm. And so our speakers, local and international, will be exploring